in this video we are going to look at the side distance of roads in the previous video we have uh, got an introduction and we learned about the basic design criteria and the cross section of a road in this video what we will be looking at is the side distance of the road so what is side distance side distance is the actual length of the road visible to a driver so if you are driving a vehicle on a road you can see ahead so the length of the road ahead which you can see is called side distance but when i say length of the road it should be along the road if it is a straight section of that road the side distance is along that straight section if it is a curved portion if the length should be measured along that curve so the side distance is the actual length of road visible to a driver so why do we need side distance there are three occasions but there are many occasions mainly i have listed out three occasions so we need side distance to stop a vehicle when approaching an obstacle so if you are driving if you see some object is on the road so you have to stop the vehicle before hitting that object so we call it stopping a vehicle when approaching an obstacle likewise at the overtaking uh, scenario if you are going to overtake a vehicle you need to see the road ahead so that it is clear to overtake safely and again we need side distance when we are coming to an intersection or a junction whether to put your vehicle into the junction or stay until the junction is clear so these are some scenarios we need side distance so here we have some majors where side distance is important or constraint so in the top left image you can see the side distance is somewhat blocked by this wall in the second image you can see the side distance can be blocked by the gradient of this road this if this, if this vehicle is going further forward this vehicle cannot be seen to this place so the grade of the road affects the uh, side distance. Here, this is a nighttime situation. Uh, whether if the road is, even though the road is straight, you can see the road until the headlight goes up to some distance. That is, we call it the headlight distance. You can see the road ahead up to the headlight. Uh, this will happen if there is no road light. Then in this fourth image, you can see the side distance is blocked by this bridge, this overhead bridge. So you can see the vehicle here, but if it is too far from this bridge, you cannot see it because of the bridge. So these are the things where yeah, you. Uh, come across the side distance criteria. So in this image you can see how side distance is important. If this is a curve, you call this a crest curve on a road. The curve is like this, you call it, you call it a crest curve. So a driver is coming from this side, then he has a, a some object here on the other side of the road. So this is the line of sight you can see. So along the road we call the distance side distance. So to measure this side distance you have to calculate the side distance. So what are the factors affecting the side distance? By seeing this, this top image you can see the driver height, eye height affect the side distance because if this is a car, the car driver sees less area because he is at a 
clearly lower elevation in the car. If this is a lorry or a bus or such, such as a truck or a container, the driver is at a high position. He can see much of the length ahead because his eye is at a high position. On the other side, this object, if it is a high object, the driver will see it early. If it is a very small object, the driver will see it lately because this object cannot be seen within this line of sight. In the bottom image, same thing happens. Here you have an overhead bridge. So the line of sight will be blocked by this bridge. So this overhead bridge height would affect the side distance. So if it is at a high elevation than this, the driver will clearly see this. Then if you imagine this, if this is a night time situation, the driver will see the tail light of the preceding vehicle. This driver is coming from here and another vehicle is going here. So this driver will see the tail light, the uh, that side red light of the preceding vehicle. So the height of the tail light will affect the side distance because if it is at a high position, this driver will see it early. But if it is at a lower position, sometimes he may not see. So that is the factors affecting the side distance. So here I have listed the factors which affect the side distance design. These values are taken from RDA geometric design guidelines, that means the Sri Lankan standards. Uh, but if you consider other countries like USA or Australia or England, they have their own values. Some values are similar to these ones, some values are different from this one. So according to the situation, you have to select the values. But as a guide, I have used the RDA geometric design guidelines for side distance to uh, set, set out these values because we are uh, mostly working in Sri Lanka. So here one important thing it is the total reaction time. I will tell you about this in a later slide uh, but these things we have talked the driver I height it affect the side distance. So if it is a passenger car, if the driver is in a passenger car, we will take the driver I height as 1.05. If it is a commercial vehicle like a lorry or a truck, we say uh, get the side distance as, or we select the side distance as 1.8 meter. Then the object cut off height means the object or the uh, vehicle on the other side of the road where it is not the driver, it is the other vehicle or the object. So if it is an approaching vehicle, if it is approaching from the other side, we select the height as 1.15 meters. If it is a stationary object, that means that is not moving, it is stand still at, the, at that location, so we Select the uh, object height as 0.2 meters. So the vertical ta vertical tail light or stop light, I told you earlier, it will be taken as 0.6 meters. Then the height of the headlight is taken as 0.75 meters. This upward divergence angle that should be useful for this situation, it is taken as 1 degree. Uh, and the vertical clearance. This height is taken as 4.8 to 5.2 meters. Depends on the road in operation. If it is a local road or not, as, such as a B class road or a C class road, we take, take it as 4.8 meters. If it is an important road such as expressway or a, a class road, you might take it as 5.2. So that is the criteria we encounter in side distance design. Then we will look at 
what are the types of side distances we come across in side distance design. There are four types. One is stopping side distance. So as the name implies, you know stopping side distance means when you are driving, you come across a object or obstacle when you when you are driving. So you apply brakes in your vehicle, then the vehicle will be going to deaccelerate and stop just before hitting the object. So the distance travel at that time we call it stopping side distance. So in this example a car is driving and an animal is here. So this car driver detects that there is an animal so in the road so he decides he detects that there is an animal then he decides that he should break and stop the vehicle so once he is going to decide that thing you get some distance traveling until he is deciding this reaction time is that he is until he is deciding deciding that he is going to break the vehicle travels some distance then he applies brake so once he applies brake the vehicle deaccelerates and stops just before hitting the animal so his total distance his total distance is called stopping side distance then you have the overtaking side distance so if it is a two lane road if you have a vehicle going in front of you and the other side of the road you see there are no vehicles and there are dash lines on the center line so you can overtake so you decide to overtake that vehicle then what we will have see what happens there here you can see you are on this vehicle and the other vehicle is traveling so you see there is a vehicle coming from here but you, you assume that you have enough distance to overtake so you come here you overtake and you come into your lane so total distance travel in this is d1 plus d2 is called the overtaking side distance so in overtaking side distance you will be traveling on one lane and you put your vehicle to the other lane and overtake the vehicle in front of you and you come back to your original lane so distance travel at that time is called overtaking side distance then you have something called continuation side distance it is a part of overtaking side distance so if you see this example sometimes when you are going to overtake this vehicle you put your vehicle into this position just parallel uh, to this position then you see ahead of the other lane and you decide whether to overtake or not to overtake because depending on the uh, situation of the other lane let us say you are in this position then this vehicle is somewhere here you think before hitting this vehicle or before uh, facing an accident with this vehicle you can overtake so you overtake so the distance travel in this time period is called the continuation side distance so in continuation side distance what the difference is you are at this position you are at the other lane and you put your vehicle to the other lane and decide whether to overtake or not if you are going if you overtake that vehicle the distance is called the continuation side distance if, if you think the side distance is not enough so you will come back to your normal lane again without overtaking
then the headlight side distance means the length of the headlight uh, which can be seen at the night time condition usually we take this headlight side distance as similar to the stopping side distance so is we take the stopping side distance equal to the headlight side distance at the uh, headlight side distance criteria situation then we are going to talk about stopping side distance the stopping side distance has two parts i told you before when, uh, when the driver sees a object and when he, before he is going to break he will think whether what is going to happen so if he think he is going to hitting the object he started to break so when thinking he is traveling some distance in his speed so we call it the reaction time if i move back to this slide in this location the driver thinks he has to apply brake so before pressing the brakes he will travel some distance so the uh, time interval between the detection of the hazard and applied braking is considered as 2.5 seconds so we call it the reaction time so it is taken as 2.5 seconds but this 2.5 second is not for all drivers if you are a very quick driver it will be less than 1 second so if you are a very old driver or uh, non experienced driver you may take some time so by research the pe people have identified a general value which is 2.5 seconds for reaction time to cover up all the situations then after braking the vehicle will be stopped so after braking vehicle will travel some time some distance and stops so there are two parts as i told you earlier the distance travel during the reaction time before applying the brake after applying the brake the vehicle will travel some more distance and stop the collection of the length in these situations are called the stopping side distance so this is the equation for stopping side distance which is listed in RDA geometric design guidelines this equation is same for most of the other guidelines also Astro and Astro they have the same equation actually what RDA has done is they got the equation from those guidelines uh, the stopping side distance or SSD is equal to PR into V over 3.6 plus V square over 254 new. So, V, PR is the total reaction time which is 2.5 seconds as I told you earlier. V is the design speed which is the design speed of the road and new is the coefficient of longitudinal friction longitudinal friction means the friction along the road once you apply the brake the friction will act the friction on this surface will act on this vehicle along this line so longitudinal friction is the friction along this road surface the friction along the road surface the friction along the road surface which where the vehicle is traveling because there is another friction part which will be we will be learning under horizontal alignment so this friction component is applying on the uh, vehicle along the traveling direction so we call it longitudinal friction so tr we know that is 2.5 usual v is the design speed we will be knowing that also when you are designing a road mu is the one we don't know 
So it is given in RDA design guidelines according to the design speed. According to design speed, uh, longitudinal friction factor uh, will be uh, changed uh, from well some uh, higher value to lower value. If the design speed is lower, friction factor is high. If the design speed is higher, friction friction factor is low. And the friction factor or mu depends on several conditions. That is the speed of the road as we uh, see in this table and the tire condition, type of pavement and the surface condition. If it is if the tires are new, we will be having a uh, good friction if the pavement or the uh, road surface this pavement means the road surface if the road surface is a good road, good new road surface the friction will be higher so uh, actually uh, not only good but it should be a good quality pavement so, uh, so we will be learning these things in highway construction management so if the uh, payment material and the material mixture is better it will provide it will give you better friction so it, the uh, longitudinal friction factor will be depending on uh, type of the payment then the surface condition whether it is dry or wet if the surface condition is or the whole surface is wet we will have some kind of lesser friction value but these values are taken to address all the uh, factors to some extent and so these values are, have some kind of safety margin also then the previous equation for stopping side distance is for a flat ground that means the uh, road is flat for that equation but generally we come across a uh, graded ground that means the road have slopes like here this road is coming along a slope it is going upward if the vehicle is going this way it is going upward if it is coming to the this coming to this direction it will be coming downward so we can modify the equation according to the grade of the road so what will happen is we have the same equation here and this is the uh, modification part so instead of mu you will be having mu plus c.01 g g is uh, given as a percentage so if the road has a 10 percent slope you call it 0 0.1 10 into 0 0.01 that is point uh, sorry 10 into point zero one that means one here yeah. so likewise uh, you have to calculate the grade and check the super uh, stopping side distance so if this g value is a positive one you call it uphill so if the vehicle is traveling in this direction so you have a positive grade so if this is positive and this is already positive this bottom one will be higher so this part will be lower so you will be having a lower stop inside this plus if it is coming downwards this has become a minus one because it is negative for downhill so this becomes a lower value these two addition will become a lower value than new so you will be having uh, high side step inside this thing um, then uh, one more thing i have to tell you in this equation this part represents the breaking this uh, this part represents the uh, length you traveled until you get the decision that means the length you travel and at the total reaction time and this is the length you travel at the breaking distance 
so this is the collection of distance to get the stopping side distance so here also you have the same this is the uh, length of the road until you get the uh, decision once you apply break you will get this length so that is about the stopping side distance then these are some general values for stopping side distance listed in RDA geometric design guidelines if the stopping side is the design speed is 30 you can see the stopping side distance is around 30 and continuation side distance is 60 and overtaking side distance is 160 you can see this overtaking side distance is very much greater than these two so here also if you put the this design speed value and new value into the equation you will get this value so you will get something like 29 point something so you have rounded up to 30 that is why what that is what we are getting that is why we are getting 30 as stopping side distance then you can see this for design speed of 40 you have SSD is uh, stopping side distance is 45 and continuation side distance is 90 if you see these two you can see stopping side distance is half of the continuation side distance otherwise in other words continuation side distance is equal to twice of stopping side distance so these are the uh, object values we have selected to calculate the stopping side distance and other side distance uh, actually we are not designing for overtaking side distance we are not considering overtaking side distance if we are going to consider overtaking side distance we have to put the values put these uh, design values so design speed values and vehicle vehicles into a design speed or a mod put these parameters into a model and calculate the uh, overtaking side distances but since these values are very high we are not going to adopt these values in our design it will make our design very un uneconomical instead what we do is we are doing the designs for ssd or stopping side distance or if the conditions prevail if you can have more side distance than 30 so we will be giving the uh, continuation side distance so in this stage sometimes you may not understand what we are uh, what we discuss as this uh, stopping side distance and apply into a road because um, still you don't know where you apply the stopping side distance in the road so you will be uh, learning it under uh, vertical alignment you will understand this thing very clearly at the vertical alignment section but in this section what we are discussing is what is the length of stopping side distance or continuation side distance at each design speed and what are the parameters affecting the design speed so as i told you earlier we are not taking overtaking side distance into account when designing roads so the application of side distance standards uh, as I told you earlier, overtaking side distance is very much greater than stopping side distance. So it is not economical to provide overtaking side distance throughout the road phase. If you can provide it easily, you will, you can provide it, but you have, you are not, uh, you are, you are not required to adhere to overtaking side distance everywhere. So instead of that, you can use absolute minimum side distance which is a uh, stopping side distance if you have a chance to adopt 
continuation side distance you have to uh, use that continuation side distance in the design instead of stopping side distance without going too much into the budget here you have two questions uh, first one the side distance assumes drivers are traveling at the posted speed limit 10 miles about the speed limit or 10 kilometers about the speed limit and then the 85th percentile is for speed of the facility and the final answer is the design speed of the facility so if you discuss these four answers you can uh, you can see you will remember that all the equations are uh, related to design speed of the facility so the answer would be design speed of the facility then you have a second question in that question you have to calculate stop inside distance under three grade in the road so your road grade will be uh, flat grade og equals zero and three percent upward gradient and four percent for minus four percent or four percent downward gradient you have to uh, do this uh, calculation by yourself i will be discussing it in a later time so that is about uh, stopping side distance and side distance so in this uh, video we have learned what is side distance and what are the constraints what are the parameters we consider in side distance what type of side distance we have and what are the equations that is the equation to calculate side distance and finally we talked about the application of side distance in road design so that is about side distance in the next section we will be looking at horizontal alignment of the road